Hey Techno Studs, in this video, we're gonna set up and configure a Pi so that it can be a DHCP server. I'm gonna be installing the DHCP services using command line. So I'm gonna open up a terminal window and once it's open here, I'm going to make it a little bit larger so we can make sure we can see it. And then I will type in sudo because we need elevated privileges for this and i'm going to start by just making sure that all the uh, package information is up to date on here so i'm going to do apt dash get update and make sure that it's got the, all the most recent information that it's working off of so it's going through the process of reading these packages and making sure it's all up to date next we'll actually install the dhcp server so we're going to type in sudo because this is going to be elevated permissions and then apt get since we're installing we'll type install and the uh, service that we're going to install is isc dash dhcp dash server and then we'll hit enter and i'll go through the process of installing this ask do you want to continue yes we do all right, that took a couple minutes to install. And so then uh, we also see that it tried to start it, but failed. We just need to configure this before it starts up. So the next step is to configure this. To edit these configurations, what we'll use is we'll use nano to edit the config file. So we'll do ele use elevator permissions. We'll use nano to edit this. And we uh, want to go to the directory etsy dhcp slash dhcp d conf and then we'll get into the file to edit it let's take a look at this configuration file i made the terminal window a little bit larger so we can see it so as i'm scrolling through these options here in this configuration file the first thing that i want to run across that i want to talk about is this default lease time the default lease time six says 600 so that is in seconds so if i wanted to figure out how many minutes that was i could just take 600 divided by 60 seconds in a minute. And so this is for 10 minutes. The default lease time on here is 10 minutes, which is pretty short. And the max lease time is 7,200 divided by 60 is 120. So I've worked on networks that are pretty large and for all of this communication to be eaten up by this DHCP server is probably unnecessary. So I like to extend, as long as you have the enough IP addresses, extend these out a little bit longer. You know, if you have short lease times, then it will cycle through a little faster. So if people are, uh, if machines are getting off of your network constantly, then it can, you can reuse those IP addresses, but then it gets a little bit more chatty on the network because you have, uh, you have a lot of machines that continue to check in with it versus if you, uh, have longer lease times, then you will, you'll have IP addresses out there that have been assigned that stay open a little bit longer, which if you're a short on IP addresses can be a problem. So you want to kind of vary this depending depending on what type of equipment, what type of, uh, if you have people that are jumping on and off your network consistently, how many IP addresses do you have available to you? But I'm going to change this. Uh, let's say the default lease time is gonna be if the client doesn't ask for a certain amount of lease time, then it's gonna get the default lease time. And then the max lease time is the maximum amount of lease time that this, this uh, server will hand out given if a client asks for more time then uh, then they could be given more time so let's say i want set the, the the default lease time to be uh, i'm going to say 12 hours and the reason why i do 12 hours is that kind of gives a window a, a working window of during the day of eight hours plus or minus a few hours on each end so if somebody comes in they're going to work eight nine ten hours and then when they leave then that IP address will be freed up. So I feel like that that's a pretty good one. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's do, I want it good for 12 hours. I'm gonna multiply that by, there's 60 minutes in an hour multiplied by, there is 60 seconds in a minute. So I want a default lease time of 8,640. So I'm going to change this to 8,640 and 40. 
So the next thing that I run across is the max lease time. And so I'm going to calculate the max lease time here. And uh, this, uh, maybe I don't care as much about this. Maybe I want it to be good for um, two days. So if I wanna calculate that, two days, there's 24 hours in a day, and there's 60 minutes in an hour, and then there is 60 seconds in a, uh, in a, a minute. So uh, 172,800, so 172,000, so 172,800 is what I have for that. And that gives them a much longer lease time. I've made my terminal window a little bit larger to make sure that it's visible and you can see what's in this dhcpd.com file. So let's take a look at what's inside of it. So I'm gonna scroll down and the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the default lease time, which is the default time that it's going to hand out to the clients versus the max lease time, which is the max that it will hand out to the client. What the difference is, is that most, a lot of clients are, they're really not going to request a time frame on which they want a lease given to them. And so they're just going to get the default lease time. So we can specify a default lease time, but some clients may request a specific lease time and they can get up to whatever the max lease time is that we're going to allow. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at these. Uh, first of all, uh, this is 600. The default lease time is 600. And that is actually pretty short. So let's take a look. I'm going to bring up a calculator here. And 600 seconds uh, divided by 60 because there's uh, 60 seconds in a minute. So divided by 60 and we come up with 10 minutes. So this is this is saying the default lease time is 10 minutes, which might be a little short. That means that every 10 minutes, a client is actually is checking in. Actually, it's a little bit shorter than that because they, they start checking in about the halfway mark and, and they, I say, hey, can I still keep this IP address? Hey, can I still keep this IP address? So that's a little short. And if you have a very large network that could generate, could end up being a lot of traffic that you generate. So of course, if we extend things out, uh, then let's say we have it for a month and we hand out IP addresses for a month and you have a lot of people that are getting on your network and, uh, and then they get off you know, two hours later. I worked at a college where I managed their, their network at this college. And uh, there was constantly people coming in and out. So if you were to hand out those IP addresses and they had it for a month, then we would eat up all of those IP addresses because there's always new people that were coming on. And then this DCP server couldn't hand out that IP address for that whole month. And so uh, what we needed to do is in that case, we need to bring the lease times down and have the lease times down. Or some cases you want to bring the lease times up. Like if you have the same people that are reporting in, and it also depends on how many IP addresses you have. If you have a ton of IP addresses, way more than what you, uh, how many clients you have, then why do you may need to make them check in uh, more often. You could have them check in less. So in this case, I really like to set the default lease time to about 12 hours. And I figure the reason it is is because people are going to come onto campus or come onto uh, the, uh, the business and plug in their laptop. They're going to work for eight to 10 hours and then they're going to jump back off. And then that frees that up and maybe they're working remotely the next day, so it frees up that, that uh, address. So if I were to figure that out, if I want their, make sure this is clear, uh, I want them to work for, I want this to, the default lease time to be 12 hours. So 12 hours, there are 60 minutes in an hour. So I'm gonna multiply that by 60, and then there is 60 seconds in a minute. So now I come up with 43,200. So I'm gonna change this default lease time to 43,200. So 43,200. And then uh, as far as max lease time, let's say a couple days, maybe a week. Um, I'm just gonna do a couple days. That's 48 hours is a couple of days. So 48, there's uh, 60 minutes in an hour. So multiply that by 60. 
and then there is 60 seconds in a minute. So multiply that by 60, and we come up with 172,800. So 172,800. And now I've got my least times set in the configuration file. All right, as we scroll further down in this configuration file, we see that there's this authoritative right here. And what that is, is uh, some of your networks um, will have multiple DHCP servers or you'll have DHCP that's tied into some other services. Uh, in either case, a stray DHCP server is not good on your network. You don't want to have any stray DHCP servers. And so this is uh, just kind of a check to make sure that there's no other DHCP servers on your network. There is not. This is part of a uh, network that there is not another DHCP server. So this is going to be the authoritative server for the network. So I'm going to delete the comment on there to make sure that this is authoritative. All right, scrolling through the rest of this configuration file, I'm going to see several scenarios here. And uh, th you, this is a just a very basic declaration here of the range that you want to hand out. I want something with a few more options here. Here's the boot P, which is the older version of DHCP. So I uh, don't need that. And then here we have for internal networks, this has a lot of the features that I'm looking for where I want to hand out a small range. I want to um, possibly specify a domain name ser server, uh, whether I want to define a router. So I, there's different things I can define with this. So what I'm going to do is, uh, this is the one that I'm looking for. I'm going to uncomment, uh, first of all, the subnet, and then what am I going to define within this? Uh, so let's see what I want to define is I want to define first of all the range. So the range is going to be 10.1.0 and we'll do a, a later part of the part of the range. So maybe let's do 150 to 10.1.0.160. I'm just going to do this small range for now. And then uh, the subnet within here, I need to make sure that I need to um, specify the subnet that this is going to be on, which is going to be 10.1.0.0 with a network mask of 25, 25, 25, 0. Okay, so there we have that. Uh, domain, I don't really have a domain server on there, so I'm not going to specify that. The um, the router, I don't have a router at this point in time, so I'm not going to specify that. I don't need a broadcast address. I just want the default broadcast address. So then I have the default lease time and the max lease time. This is if I want to override the, the configuration that I had earlier. So what I can actually do is I can use this uh, this Pi to, ho to be a DC pre server for multiple um, networks that are out there. And so I could specify multiple ranges within this. And so I can then uh, copy this and paste it. So that way I can configure these different networks. And so I can actually specify a different lease time and a max lease time for each one of those networks. And if I scroll down, there's also ways that I can like actually specify different groups or different host names, or there's a lot of options within here. The next step in this process is to tell the device which interfaces it's going to be listening for those DHCP discoveries on. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get into uh, this file right here. So sudo nano and then etsy default isc dash DHCP dash server. And when we get into there, we see that I've actually already set in here the interfaces version four I set to ETH0, so now it's going to be listening on ETH0, uh, and it will be responding to that. And it's going to associate, it knows the IP address scope that it's going to associate with this ETH0. It's going to associate the two because of the static IP address that we sent on, set on this machine is going to be associated with uh, the pool that we created in that DHCPD 
.conf file. So now I've got this all set up so that it's uh, listening. So I'm going to exit out of here. Um, at this point in time, I could start up the service or I can restart the server. If I wanted to restart the server, what I could do is I could type in this command right here, sudo service and the isc-dhcp-server start. And then I hit the start button and then that will uh, get it running. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Then uh, what we'll do is we'll jump over to the Windows box and see what it looks like on the Windows box. Time to see if our Pi configurations took effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get onto that network interface card. So we will open this up. I am going to configure this card and I'm actually gonna go through the adapter options here and, uh, and go into the properties of the adapter options. We are going to choose IP version four. And then I'm going to say ob obtain IP address automatically. And we're gonna click okay, close out of this. And then it is, you can see that it's identifying. So it's in the process to see, um, to try to get a DHCP address here. Once I've given this machine enough time to get a DHCP address, I can open up a command window and I'm gonna type in IP config. And if we look at this IP config, it has the 10.1.0.150. So it is now getting one of those host addresses. It's the first host address that we defined in our pool on the Pi. If you like this video, could you hit that like button? 